Psalm 91. If you're there, say yes, I'm there. All right. We're just going to go all the way to verse 16. So I think we should just take it in concert, isn't it? All right. One, two, go. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and the, from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see what of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. Verse 10, no evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. Verse 13, I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent I shall trample on the foot. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. He shall, I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. Finally, with long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Preach that, say that to your neighbor, say, with long life, he will satisfy you and show you his salvation. Let's talk about secrets of long life. Secrets of long life. Father, we are so thankful for your presence and thank you for your spirit at work within us. Breathe on your word to the end that we may fulfill our purpose and live our lives the way you've always intended for us to do. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think it's very important to lay that foundation of longevity. God wants us to live long. I think it's very important that we are clear about that. It is the will of God for his children to live long. Right from the time the man was created, obviously, in a sense, eternity was even in the mind of God. That's why even though man fell, Jesus came back that in him we may have a life and have it abundantly. So that in Christ Jesus, we would really live forever. That's why Christ, there's that hymn that says, and man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. That when we believe Jesus, we pass from death to eternal life. Romans 6, 23, Romans 3, 23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Oh, Romans 3, 23 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 6, 23 says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. It is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, as far as this world is concerned, Man will either sleep, if we're Christians, we don't die, we actually sleep. We just transit from this world into eternity. And even wicked people also die and go into eternal damnation. Um, but as far as this earth, this time, this space is concerned, every child of God must know. If you've ever asked the question, will I live long? This is the answer. It is the will of God for you to live long, and you will live long in Jesus' name. The psalmist said, with long life, he will satisfy me. May you be satisfied with long life. I guess it's out of this understanding that it says, I shall not die, I shall live to declare the works of God. Not only does God want us to live long, he wants us to live well. To live long and to live well is the plan of God for us. And today, I feel it's important to just remind ourselves that 
um, it's possible for us to live long and that we have a part to play in our longevity. We have a part to play somewhere in the course of this month. We've touched on it during um, uh, um, the, man, the, man, the man theme program. We touched on it. We, we're just touching on it in different ways. But I just wanted to bring it out today to speak because this will not just, it's not just about the length of days. It will also affect the quality of life that we will live. The point I'm about to share with you this morning. And so let's just get right into it. But before we get into that, help me ask you, do you understand God wants you to live long? Say you will live long in Jesus' name. And you will live well in Jesus' name. So then, the first secret, again, is not such a secret after all. The first secret is to honor the elderly or elderly people. Honor elderly people. If you want to live long, honor elderly people. Honor older people. Ephesians 6 from verse 1 to three speaks about this, and then I'm going to get to verse four in a bit. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Verse two, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Next verse, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on earth. Did you see both quality and quantity there? Yeah, that it may be well and that you may live long on the earth. And he said the key is to honor your father and your mother. And by extension, you know how Paul told Titus and, and, and also Timothy to treat the elderly people as fathers, uh, elderly men as fathers, the older women as mothers, and the younger one as sisters, and the younger men as your brothers. So you understand the spirit of this text is not just your biological parents. That's why the African culture kind of got it right. Honor was imbued into our culture. I know the extremes to it, but it doesn't change the fact that we started with that culture of honor. And it's one of those things you shouldn't let go in your life. Can I get an amen? amen. To honor people is the will of God. God says, if you honor those that are ahead of you, if you honor the age ahead of you, you will get to that age and you will exceed it. That's how it is. To learn to respect people. To learn to accord people the regard that is due to them we increasingly have a generation that disregards age people tell you it's nothing but numbers no 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 god didn't make a mistake listen the truth of the matter when you realize is that none of us could have chosen when we were born i mean god preordained it, assigned it, at, uh, appointed our times and our seasons. It is such that, um, uh, uh, you know, my, my, my parents, when I was growing up, they used to, sometimes when, you know, somebody is, is uh, no, no, let me even leave my parents. Let me just come to general sibling rivalry. Sometimes among siblings, we, or my older cousins, they, there's, a, there's a Yoruba way of saying, look, if, let me say Yoruba, and I'll try to transliterate or translate that. Now, you see, it's when you hear that kind of statement, you know that somebody is being extremely rude or somebody is feeling extremely insulted. And Jesus is trying to say to you, look, if, if people gave birth to babies when they land on earth, I will be your mother or your father. So they're trying to tell you, show more age, meaning. You see, they're trying to tell you, <laughs> they're trying to tell you we're not on the same level. All right. But the, the point in all of that is that well, it is the truth. If somebody is older than you, he's older than you. There's nothing you can do about it. And the person ought to be regarded. Now, I know the dynamic sometimes of people hurting one another, of people offending one another, of people are knowing you. Parents get on our throat sometimes. Verse 4 of Ephesians 6, it spoke to, to parents. It says, and you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. I think it was the last day or something. I, I took time to explain that parents must also understand sometimes they annoy, or give me the New Living Translation, uh, and then may I check the Amplified, just to make a point here. It says, and fathers, okay, fathers do not provoke your children to anger. And I said that it means a father can provoke his child, isn't it? You can, um, give me the, give me the, the, the uh, Amplified. All right, it says, fathers, do not irritate or provoke your children to anger. Do not exasperate them to what? Resentment. It means you can do things somewhere that your child can resent, resent you. 
that you call sometimes and they really don't feel like picking the calls. Especially if you're somebody who likes to, every little mistake your child makes, you are hacking the child. You are doing things or we get into their truth and will not let them rest and provoke and annoy or become overbearing, over demanding. Look, when they see the call, they're not excited. They just do it out of obligation. May your children not honor you out of obligation. That they, they ought to be excited to do it. So that's why the responsibility is on us to check and balance things out, to know when to pull back, to know when to give them breather. In fact, when I was meditating on this part of the message, I felt like reminding parents again, you also hold your children honor. Yeah, the, if they are not children anymore, we ought to honor them. If somebody is married, I mean, let me even forget marriage. Somebody is working, especially <laughs> as, they, as they get matured, when they become teenagers, I'm tracking, I'm just for myself tracking, tracking all the way back. We say, the way you treat a child, treat a child is not the way you treat a teenager or even a preteen. And then the way you treat a teenager is not the way you treat an adult. Once you cross into the 20s, some level of respect ought to start coming in. And then the way you treat them from that point really, it should just keep, you know, uh, magnifying or getting bigger. There was a, there was a, uh, and I like just to reference how there was a woman who's, daughter had graduated as an accountant, working for, doing well in a, not married yet, but doing well, and then looked back at their family business and wanted to advise her mom as to, we can tweak a few things, but the mom will not. I mean, you were, you want to tell me how to run my business. You know, the money, I, I sent you to school from, you know, all those, all those kind of conversations. Yes, mommy, thank you, you sent her to school, but now she knows more than you. And you should be humble to, because you trained her. So that's why some of the, have your kids come back from school and corrected your grammar before? Your pronunciation, that one. Oh. Especially those of our, who have kids abroad now, they are, they are in for it. Daddy, you don't say what? You don't say what? Please listen and encourage them and let's, let's start improving. <laughs> When they, as they grow, we ought to accord them that level of respect and honor. But now your child is a graduate. Your child is married. They have their own kids. And you know, sometimes I tell parents, when you were their age, you knew the trouble you were fomenting. You knew nobody could talk to you. Now you are trying to, to suppress, oppress your child at 25, at 30. No. No, he ought not to be. You're exasperating them. They will pick you up. They will, they will be busy when you call. And then they'll call you back at night. They'll say, oh, Daddy, I was, very, I was very busy that time. It's because he was just angry. They didn't want to talk to you first. I'm not saying that's what happened yesterday. Your child might have been busy. <laughs> but if it happened, please examine yourself. <laughs> but, so, having said that, let me come back to this honor. But please... No matter what your parents have done or what they are doing, we still have a responsibility of honoring. Even if you honor them grudgingly, still honor them. Yes. You see, because I like to tell young people, our parents have done and they are doing their own. Their time is almost off. So whatever seed you are sowing now, you are the one that will reap it. So if you, if you, if you, if you, I mean, if they have 20 years left, 30 years left, and, and you, you start throwing stones, don't forget, you still have 50 years, you have 60. So you need to be careful the seeds you're sowing. That's why the Bible didn't ask, in fact, it didn't ask what your parents did to you, you just said, honor them more that you may live well and that your days may be long. So the responsibility is on us. Are we on the same page right now? Oh, church, I can't hear you. All right, someone say, honor older people. Let me tap in and say, honor older people. <laughs> yes, we should honor older people. Respect them. Give them the regard that is due. Number two, keep your tongue from evil. Number two, keep your tongue from evil. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. First Peter 3 and 10. It says, for he who would love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from what? Evil and his lips from speaking deceit. He who loves life and will see good days. That is what lent, look at it again, quality and quantity. What should he do? He should refrain his tongue from evil. We 
We know death and life are in the power of the tongue, isn't it? We know that what you say is powerful. So you have a responsibility to use your words right. But I kept thinking about this. If you keep pulling, drawing evil, curses, abusive words at people, it means curse and evil are always present with you. Let me say that again. If somebody keeps th throwing out curses, you abuse people, you curse them, you do all kinds of things. It means curses and evil are what? It means they are present with you. And it do not just affect the people you're throwing it at, it affects your life too. We have to keep our words from evil speaking. We can't be one of those who just keep talking anyhow and talking anyhow. Let your Christianity affect your words. Let it affect your language. James chapter 1 and verse 26. James 1, 26. Hear what it says. It says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is what? It's useless. It says, look, if you don't have control over your tongue, you're only deceiving yourself because it's going to hurt you. And it says, look, you are really, really not born again. If you're born again, I guess that's one of the reasons why when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, God gives us a new language. If we should change the way we speak. When you're born again, it will affect the kind of words you can speak out of your mouth. As your mind changes, some jokes won't be convenient anymore. There was a guy, uh, I'm trying to remember, it was Larry G now. He, he used to have a Jesus joke. And then he said, after he, after he came into an understanding of how powerful the name of Jesus is, he said, I don't want to joke with that name anymore. Now I understand it's not, it, no, it's not a name I joke with because there's power in the name of Jesus. When you begin to understand that you are anointed, you won't look at your friend and say, weary. Because if you say so, you just spoke with power over that person. It means you won't look at yourself and say, I am stupid. I'm, why am I so foolish? You can't say that about you anymore. Because there is power in your word. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And not to mention cursing your children. That is even completely. And listen, children can annoy you. People can upset you. But we must have control. God will help us to have control. That's why we don't curse our spouses. No, you don't curse. I mean, sometimes I, I wonder, how do you sleep with someone and then two days after you're cursing the person and then three days after you want to sleep with the person again? <laughs> it doesn't add up. It does not add up. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work. How do you curse, curse? How do you, how do you? And, and sometimes the enemy knows he can't touch us. So what he wants to do is to have us touch each other. He knows, look, when Balaam had, uh, 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 was hired by Balak to curse the children of Israel, he said, look, God has blessed them. I can't curse them. There's so much that God has done to them. There's nothing I can do. He said, but there's something, there's something. You know, if you can get them to hurt themselves, if you can set them up that with their own hands, they start doing something wrong. He said, ah, don't worry. They'll get into trouble. He couldn't curse them, but they were able to tempt them to do evil against themselves. And that, that's how the problem came for Israel. So what the enemy wants to do is that a parent that ought to bless the child. Look, in, in a sense, the world is a different world. In a sense, things have changed. And, and over and beyond all you can ever know. So what the enemy now wants is that from a house where blessings ought to come, when Jacob was about to die, Jacob said, bring the sons of Israel to me. Let, they, let me tell them how their end will be. And do you know what he was doing? He was prophesying. And as he was speaking, he said, this is how their lives will turn out. When you speak over your family, you're speaking into their future. Help me tap on them and say, bless and don't curse. So we, we have to be deliberate to be sure that you're speaking blessings over people. Would you practice with the person beside you right now? Say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Say, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. 
Did you say amen to it? You are blessed in Jesus' name. Every man ought to lay his hands on his wife and bless her. Every woman ought to put her hand on her husband's shoulder and bless him. You parents ought to put your hand on your children and bless them. If I get home right now and my mom is around, I give her a hug, I, I, I prostrate, I give her. So this used to be the pro, 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 procession. You see, because if I know if I go straight, I can get a hug. I typically prostrate first. I go, I get a hug, and then she will typically just put her hand on my head and say, bless you, and, and say something. Now, it is a beautiful thing. So when I wake my boys up, when we get up in the morning, I look for opportunities. Now, notice I said I look for opportunities. To put my hand on that head and just say, you're blessed. You see, because they are their own men now. But as babies, every day, like clockwork, we put our hands on their head and say, you are blessed and highly favored. And it's beginning to show. Yeah. It's beginning to show. So, bless. 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 Let me turn to anybody and say, you are blessed. <laughs> Secrets of long life. Keep your tongue from evil. Number three, live a decent life. Live a decent life. Live a decent life. First Peter chapter 3, verse 11. First Peter 3, let's just take 10 to 11 so that we can see it in that flow. Oh, okay. It says, for he who would love life and seek good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Verse 11 says, let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. He says, let him turn away from evil and do good. The Proverbs will say, depart from evil and do good. If you follow evil, evil will come on that life. If, if you don't live a decent life, evil will come upon the life. Listen, some time ago, the Christian life is a decent life. Is a godly life. Some time ago, we were asking, and, and I know how our father and the Lord used to say, if there's no heaven to gain and no hell to lose, it's still a beautiful thing to be a Christian. Meaning, if, we're, if there was no heaven and there's no hell, it's still a beautiful thing to be a Christian, isn't it? <laughs> you know, Romans 8 says, it says, it says, it says, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I thought about that, and I, you know, my joke usually when I come around this subject is, imagine a drug addict, a Christian who is still into drugs. His life is dependent on a substance and is prone to all kinds of evil. Imagine a Christian who does wrongs and his phone is ringing and is afraid of text messages. I mean, I just see peace disappearing. Every vice takes your peace away. It just takes a piece away. And, and so we talk about that the least you get is that you enjoy peace of mind. Your phone is ringing, you pick it and run all the way out. Some people even swallow sin before they go to bed. You know, that's a bit of an exaggeration, right? But people literally keep their, some people keep their SIM card before they sleep. Because if that SIM shows up, mercy Lord. I don't care what you say. If you're married and your spouse can't check your phone and doesn't have password to your phone, you have something you are keeping. I'm telling you. I don't care your, your story. If your spouse cannot open your phone, you're in trouble. Even if you bully her and she kept quiet, you're in trouble. You bullied him and he has kept quiet. You're still in trouble. It doesn't change it. You see, because when you're in the light, you let the light shine. You enjoy the beauty of it. Darkness always has something, something about it. So you want to keep moving towards the light. You want to keep moving your life. When, when, when the life is, the Bible told us in, in, in Luke, chapter, Luke chapter 15 about the prodigal, the prodigal son, isn't it? Now, it talked about how that the prodigal son took all his inheritance and the King James says, and he spent it in riotous living. That statement always gets at me. How do you describe one person with riot? He says he's spending a riot. His life is a riot. I mean, he's a typical Jaru. He's just the guy. He just anyhow. And I thought, and, and he describes some people. How can your life be riotous? You kill yourself before your time. Many people, many people who have no business being out at certain times of the night are falling into the hands of armed robbers. 
Many people who have no business being out, at the weather changed and they couldn't see well, they drank themselves to death. How do you get to heaven? And you are dead because you died from drug overdose, alcoholic abuse, or, or, I mean, how? To what end is it? How do we tell your kids what killed you? How do we tell family members that your dad died of Viagra overdose, died on a halot, went to, oh, you, you told everybody at home you were going to Lagos, and then phew, you really took a, a short trip to Dubai with a babe. And then plane crashed. And nobody even imagined you were, because. So how do we tell your kids that your dad fill in the gaps? <laughs> Kill themselves before time. <laughs> I mean, how do you get broke from betting? How do you get broke from betting or betting, betting? Now you're in debt. Not because you were paying school fees, but because Asna, 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 Asna. Oh, oh, Man City, Man City, Man City, Man City, Libra Red. Now your account is in red. Are you here? Live a decent life. You, think about it. Just think about it. And you ask yourself, to what end? Where does this end? Where, where am I going with this? So many people have no business dying. They took their own lives just because of carelessness. Oh, one of our uncles, one of our uncles, he drank so much. We, we, I mean, it was obvious he would die at some point. Drank too much, riotous. Mm. Let me tell you, that's not your portion in Jesus' name. So to live long, number one, honor, number two, keep your tongue from evil, number three, live a decent life. Number four, be in health or be in good health. Be in good health. And I'm going to split that into three. Third John 2 says, beloved, I wish above third John verse two says, I wish above, third John has only one chapter. So the second verse, he says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, to be in health. And I love that state of being in health. And look, let me tell you this way. You see, because I've learned over time that if your engine ever needed to be replaced, it's not the same thing as the brand new one. If you had to change up some piston and some of those things in it, it doesn't quite function the same way. If you ever had a pumping machine or something that you had to rewire, it's not quite the same as, I mean, does anybody get what I'm saying here? It's not quite the same as the original. So you do the best to be in health. Don't let it, that's why some things, some precautionary things need to be done. You know, if you don't use it until, I mean, Reverend George, I always love this story, how that Reverend George Adegbe was telling his pastors to cut down on, on sugar, especially from juices and all of that. And it's because he, he used to take at least one, one pack of like five alive every day. And then he got so down, it was the Lord that kept him. So he came and as a wise person was talking to the younger people, you guys, you need to call down on sugar. One of his sons, who is like him, said, Baba, I want to call down. <laughs> I'm going to Says, Dad, when do I also drink it to the level you drank it? Then me to I'll cut down. You see, because uh, one of my daughters used to say, when we were younger and we could drink and we could eat, and they didn't give us enough. They were always cutting, cutting. Now that we are older, we can afford it. They say we should not drink. What are we going to do? Yeah. When we wanted ice cream, mommy will not buy it until, I don't know if she's watching this message. Maybe once every, on your birthday or Christmas or something. Now that we can buy ice cream every day, Pastor Lou will not let us buy it. What are we going to do now? Eh? <laughs> well, she has another daughter on the second rule that I will not mention her name. When we see her, we cut down sugar immediately. Oh yeah, but, but see, the, the point is, cut it down. Cut, every time we say, cut it down now. Yeah, you see, because you shouldn't wear this engine out and then how to, how to pick it back and pick it back. 
Well, there, there are four major things they've told us that we should do. Number one, to, to, for your, I'm, I'm split, let me talk about your physical health first. Your physical health. They said we should exercise. Everybody say exercise. Would you please rise to your feet in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, this is my body. Say, God gave it to me. Say, I will keep it healthy. And I will exercise regularly. By the grace of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Would you jump up in the name of the Lord? Woo! All right, all right, all right, all right. God bless you. Please take your seat. Exercise regularly. No matter how old you are, no matter how big you are, no matter how young you are, there is a type of exercise you can do beyond eating. There's a type you can do. You can take a walk. The other day on, 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 on Ole Ole, oh no, I can't remember which part of the road now, I saw two ladies that were, they were trying to walk briskly and move, and they were, they were even jogging at a point, and, and they were a bit on the big side, and one of them, you know, because even with that, I felt there's a wisdom to it. One of them is a bit busty, and as she was moving, everything was moving. And I thought, wait, the, the, if she had seen a physician, they would have told her you can keep firm, don't just jump, you see, because it's important that women protect themselves extra. So you should keep your upper part firm if you're going to jump so that you don't hurt yourself. So there is a wisdom to it. There's something to do to it. Don't just let somebody tell you, I do so, so, so number of things, and you jump it and you go and do it. Let somebody guide you through. Are we on the same page? It's very important. And please, you did not gain that weight in one day. Don't let anybody tell you, just come to the gym after seven hours, come back. You just going to say, hey, oh Lord, when, Lord, when? We got to say continue. Just, just continue first. All right, let it, let it take time. It will take time, but eventually it will go. Can I get an amen? A little here, a little there. It was a little chocolate, a little, a little this, a little bokoto fuku. You know, it's a little that made it there. So don't worry, it will, it will take time. Amen. Number two, rest. Physically, exercise number two rest rest sleep god gives his beloved sleep sleep is a gift from god sleep sleep at least six hours some of us need seven few of us need eight but most of us need at least six yeah, please sleep if this four hours thing it will catch up say no no, no i don't sleep long i only sleep for us carry you know, that you, you, there's, there's nothing to be proud of. You, your body needs it. You may think you don't. Have you, ever been, have you ever been watching a match or a movie that you told yourself, I need to watch this? You are watching. <laughs> it's just that you continued your dream. You were really, you're, you were, you were, you, thank you, my son. You were really into it. Alas, it was God. You woke up and said, ah. I said, I slept off. Yes. You're, so what will happen is people have been driving and they slept off. People have been doing things. I mean, I want to use these clips, clips of people who, international platforms, and they doze off. They just go. You see, because, <laughs> have they taken you past your bus stop before? <laughs> you just wake up and say, hey, where? Yeah. In Lagos, it used to be fun. Now, this is about, I don't know, you know. Cut off phone a while, drop you the ball. If you are going to like, the, the, the time you find yourself in CMS, you know you've passed, you've, you've passed your bus stop. Sleep. Number four, eat well, eat well, eat well, eat well, eat well. It is not the size. It is the quality. The more colors they say is on your table, the healthier your food. Please eat well. Eat well. And, and eat wisely, okay? Number four, please do your checkups. Do your checkups. Number four, do your checkups, medical checkups. Yes, do your checkups. Africans, do your checkups. Oh, help me tap you and say, say, medicine is not your enemy. And say, my brother, because now speaking to these born again Christians, faith people, I trust God, I'm working in health. I don't need any checkup, I can feel it in my body. I carry. See, the the fittest of us is not the smallest of us. The fact that you're slim does not mean you're healthy. No, it doesn't mean, and the fact that you're big doesn't mean you're unhealthy. Well, even the kind of, we can say, it could point to being unhealthy, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't, 
the, the bigger, the slimmer person doesn't necessarily live longer than the bigger person. It's just that if, the, if your BMI is good, it will help prolong your life. But it's not the only indication. Do your checkups. If you are both 40, male, female, do your checkups. It's so critical. In fact, these days, if you are both 30, it is so important. The things that used to affect people, the, all the geriatric things now has become... Once you go above 25, you need to start paying attention. So do it. Check it. In the minimum, check your weight. Check your BP once in a while. Do these things. People have dropped off. Dropped, dropped, like popo. And they say, what happened? High blood pressure. They didn't even know. He said, well, they would do it. It's, the, it's not in the eyes. Like this, my brother's eyes now. They are blessed. Yeah. If you had looked at him, looks like it's been a long weekend. But this guy is going to do well. He's going to live long. It's going to live long by the grace of God. So you, you, we, we, have to pay, <laughs> we have to pay attention. Are you with me? All right, that's number four, right? Number five, take your medications. Number five, take your medications. I'm talking to Christians. Take your medications. If you are trusted, go, you're, you're, you believe you are healed, right? Go and do a confirmatory test before you stop the drugs. Please, do a confirmatory test before you don't say, by faith, I'm not using drugs again. No. How many times have you said, by faith, I'm not, I'm not putting foil in my car. I'm going to Lagos. <laughs> oh, you, you can have faith for your body. You can have faith for ordinary car. Between your body and the car, which one is more, more important? Ordinary car. In fact, now that the foil price has gone, you should say, ah, from today I declare. I don't need foil again. My car moves in Jesus' name. I'll just go. Yeah, take your medication, trust God, do a confirmatory test and stop the medication. Don't stop because we prayed in church. Go and do your confirmation and then you stop afterwards. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Thank you. And let me quickly say something about surgeries. Hmm. There used to be a Yoruba... Thing. when they are praying for pregnant women you know a room thanks let me translate they will not bring your baby out with a knife they will not do surgery for you. They will not, you know, all those kinds that sounds very deep and spiritual. See, God, do you know how many babies and mothers died on the birth, on the birth table because we did not know? Yeah, and, and all those mission homes, be careful. Be careful. I tell you, be a strong woman, be a strong woman. They, they should, they should, they, they, are they the ones pregnant? There is nothing wrong. Ah, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> God gave wisdom to save lives. Let them do it. Let them do it. In fact, I just don't want to push this thing to a level that we can see your baby and see your wife. Ah, my brother, we ought to give God praise. Can somebody give God glory right now? Yeah. Don't let them put you under pressure. There, there is nothing like that. It is, it is just a miracle, a blessing of the Lord. Are you here? Be in health physically. Number two, be in health mentally on your mind. Be in health on your mind. And I want to beg you, how do you be in health on your mind? Refuse to worry about everything. Don't be a champion warrior. Hey, it is Sunday. What am I going to wear to church? You are worried. Hey, no, no, no. what car are we going to drive? You are in trouble. Oh, this one, this one. It's Monday. These kids are going to school. I mean, how many of you watch, baby, what's the name of that wedding party? Is it wedding party? That, um, that our, Shola, what's her name now? Shola, the lady's name. Shola Shobowale. My God, I have never seen a more champion warrior. They say, where are the Wedding reception, where are they? They say, the kids are not here. They're, hey! They say, Mama Wapu, they have kidnapped them. I say, ah, I, for the life of me, I could not, you know, I really could not fathom. I said, yay! And she was going to faint. I said, ah, ah, 
No, 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 no. How did you know? She just look for a reason to worry. Every, just worry about every, everything. Where's my husband? You're so cold. You're so cold. This is my husband. Hey! And let me come to this section. Amen. While he went to Lagos, as he called you, he has not You call him, call his wife, call his boss. Call, say, say, so why are you looking? It's my son. He will call you. Are you there? Mommy, I just left one night ago. I'm still there's traffic. Okay, when you get to your house, go and call me. And then we'll continue again. Oh, traffic in Lagos. They call again. Yes, yeah, still, we are still at, we, we are at Berger. There's traffic. Say, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Then go, say, that it's delay on We are on the road. Amen. Even as I'm saying this, my heart is, let me drink some water because you can give somebody, can give somebody something. Thank you, my son. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. I mean, tap and say, don't be a champion warrior. Worry about everything. You know, I used to make, I used to make fun of, you know, the one that cracks me up is saying, oh, wait, wait, my, my, my son, my son, is to be married to my, is married. Oh, no, 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 yeah, baby, the, the, the couple decided to take one year break. The mommy is praying. Father, every obstacle, remove it. You are on the mountain, mountain, man. They have a baby. They got baby girl. Say, eh, I hear it's not full. I hear it's not full. Father, let this hair grow. Go, 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 go. I say, ah. And then when she was going to talk, he, he called her daddy first. Before her, Father, let my daughter call. Let my granddaughter call. Her. Please rest in your mind. Okay? Don't, and don't, don't forgive people. That's mental. Forgive. Forgive. Parents, please forgive your children. I'm, I'm, as people get, sometimes they have bitter pains. I remember when, 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 it was, when it was going to the university, after all my labor, if you know what that boy said to me, ah! If you know what he said to me, and it's 20 years, and you still remember what your son did, yeah. You still remember what your son did, what your daughter said. Please forgive. Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. It is good for you to be light-hearted, to be able to laugh. That's why I love Global Harvest. If you come for one service and you don't laugh, I don't know what happened. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures evermore. Woo! It is fun to be with God. God can make you laugh. And he will make you laugh in Jesus' name. <laughs> to learn to laugh. Belly laughter. Have you seen, have you been around our father in the Lord before? You can hear his laughter around his office. Daddy laughs. <laughs> it's like Santa Claus from the belly. Laughs. Laughs. We love that kind of family. Not the family where we enter. Everybody's shh, shh. They say, what's up? Reverend is coming. Mons up, bless you. Mons up, bless you. Mons up, bless you. You're blessed. Blessed. You just distribute to everybody. Bless, bless, bless. No, in this family, you get a hug. Yeah. See, you're blessed. That's, that's what we do. That's what we do as a family. We hug, we bless. We bless, we hug. You're blessed. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed when you go out. Who wants a hug? Blessed when you come in. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Blessed of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. I like closing the service and moving towards the children's church. Hug my babies. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. My son goes to school and comes back. I can't wait to hug him. We squeeze him. Bless you, son. Good to see you. That's how we should be. My son go back to school. I said, Dad, I missed the hug. He said, don't worry. Come back home. <laughs> we are waiting. He runs in this family. He runs in this family. That's how it should be. Love and joy and laughter. Even when we make mistakes, we fight up. And then we not laugh. Go back to Abby. That's how it should be. We disagree. And then we hug. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. It should be like that. Healthy. Let your mind be open. Somebody take a deep breath this morning. Ah, ah. Just take a deep breath. Just deep breath. Believe. Laugh. Love. Nah, it's healthy. 
finally be healthy spiritually be healthy physically be healthy mentally be healthy spiritually to be in a place where you're in deep relationship with God healthy relationship with God don't talk to him once every two weeks don't talk to him only on Christmas day or watch night service healthy relationship to love the Lord and, and, and be in fellowship with him a healthy relationship there's constant communication with the father you're talking to him regularly oh yeah if it's healthy you will serve him healthy relationship you are serving see some of these precious people are still serving in different ministries serving in counseling serving in sanctuary keepers serving I'm telling you some of them just made up their minds to serve to their last breath looking for something to do healthy relationship with God don't be don't be a, a Sunday Sunday person don't be you know don't, don't be like that be in a healthy relationship with Jesus to love upon him that's why Psalm 91 verse 16 actually you see where, where he said it's he that dwells in the secret place of the most High shall abide and then verse 16 now to us verse 16 with long life I will satisfy him and show because he abides he's there I mean, think about it. If God keeps hugging you every day, ah, ah, you will live long now. Yeah. If God hugs you every day, you will live long. You will live long. You, you will live long. So you want to be in a healthy relationship with God. Do something for him. Serve him. And just put it all out here for his kingdom and his glory. Did anybody get anything this morning? And you see, that's where the beauty is. Because now... It's not just physical. It's not just mental. Spiritually, we're in. We do everything that is wise to do. And then we stay in relationship with the Lord. That's why after everything is said, I'm eating well. I'm doing everything well. And I wanted to go out one morning. And the Holy Ghost says, hold on, don't go yet. Oh, but if you're not in relationship, you won't even hear. It's even in printing your heart. You can't even know. Even when an angel is finding you in front of you, wait, wait, wait. You won't hear. It's got nothing to do with your lifestyle, with your... No, it's just instruction. Instruction, that's all. And so, so many times, so many times, you want to be at the right place at the right time. You, our lives depend on it. To be in sync with him. Are you with me? Yeah. It's very important. It's very important. Guys, what happened again? It's very important. Hallelujah. Let me round off on this note. Um, if you're here and you're yet to make Jesus the Lord of your life, we want to pray with you because we're going to take communion this morning. You see, the communion is the body and the blood of Jesus. The communion is Christ in us. It's representative of what he did for us on the cross. And the only person that should not participate is the person that's not born again. If you're not born again, don't take the communion because it is the body of Christ you should not take it just anyhow but if you're a child of God if you're born again you should partake of the communion because he died he died for us on the cross we acknowledge what he did on the cross and you want to participate on the, front, on the ground floor in the first floor wherever you are and then we'll end it the service with, we're going to do thanksgiving and all of that this morning I don't know what blessed you? I think some people need to breathe for a minute. You just need to say, Lord, I cast all these cares and all these worries on you. I just, I just release them at your feet. But before you do that, can you thank him for loving you? Just where you are, just thank him. Thank him that he loves you. Thank him that he cares for you this morning. Just thank him because you belong to him. Thank him because he's your father. Thank him for his love for you right now. If you need to cast the care on him, just cast it upon the Lord. Yes, Lord, I refuse to worry. I refuse. I cast my cares on you this morning. I just laid at your feet. Laid at your feet. If somebody needs grace to be able to exercise or to do something to modify your lifestyle, you want to ask God for the grace to do it this morning. Lord, grant me the grace to cut back on meat or red meat. Grant me the grace to reduce soda. Grant me the grace, whatever you need to cut back on. Ask God for the grace to cut back on it, to cut back. If you know you need to sleep, nah, Lord, grant me the grace to rest more. I just need to adjust this thing to sleep a bit more. To Lord, whatever I need to do, ask God for the grace to do it this morning. 
you will live long you will live well yeah ask God for the grace to do it in the name of Jesus and and as we're doing that I want to pray for somebody who is in this house who says pastor pray with me I want to give my life to Jesus or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus wherever you are in the building today is the day of salvation now is acceptable time I just want to pray with you if you like to surrender your life to Jesus or rededicate your life to Jesus wherever you are in the building can you please put your right hand on your chest if you want to give your life to Jesus this morning Let's pray together and let Jesus be the Lord of your life. i like to give my life to Jesus. Oh, come on, guys, on this section. Can I ask everybody to stand with me for a minute? Please stand. Everybody stand. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Please stand. Please stand. Stay with me. Stand and stay with me. Don't let anything distract you. This is so important. This is so critical. As we take this, you say, Pastor, everybody, please close your eyes now. Please, please close your eyes. If you have something to say to the Lord, go ahead and say it. If not, just thank him for your life. Thank him for your life right now. Thank him for your life. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Would you please put your right hand on your chest wherever you are? Put your right hand on your chest wherever you are. Yes, Lord. Put your right hand on your chest wherever you are. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. Now, do me a favor. I think I can see you, but do me a favor. Can you raise that hand above your head if you are there? You say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Please raise that hand above your head so I can see you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus sees you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Father, I'm praying for my sisters and I'm praying, Lord, as they raise their hand to you today, that Jesus, you will come into these lives, come into this heart. On the, on the gallery, I see you there. Lord, come into this life. Lord, touch these lives. I pray in the name of Jesus. Wash them in your precious blood. That these lives may be to the glory and your praise. In the name of Jesus, I declare it is well with you. And that you will serve the Lord all the days of your life. Thank you.